Hello and welcome to today's pandemic and news update video. Since our previous video, we have two COVID positives to report. Caroline Simmons from Stanford, Connecticut, who is the mayor of Stanford, Connecticut, tested positive on Monday, January 23rd. She is 36 years old. And we also have another COVID positive, which happens to be from Connecticut. The mayor of New Haven, Connecticut, tested positive on Monday, January 23rd. And that is Justin Eckler. Going to the index of my website, you will see that there was a new long COVID study released today, something that we've known about for months. Long COVID kept people out of work for multiple months. Surprise, surprise. I mean, this shouldn't be much of a surprise or the infamous saying, who could have expected this? We know some people do not recover right away and some people do develop long COVID, which keeps them from being able to work. Therefore, they're out of work for a long period of time, whether it be fatigue, loss of energy. There's a whole number of post-COVID effects that do occur. All right, moving on today to the CDC community transmission map. 61.3% of the country is in high transmission. That's down by 13.69%. 19.4% is in substantial. That's up by 4.87%. Moderate is 14.65%. That's up by 7.88%. And low is at 4.66%. The southeastern states have the highest majority of areas that are in high transmission, which incidentally, that's where we see the majority of the areas with um, high wastewater readings still. And wastewater is not dropping as fast. It is dropping in the northeast at this time. The three top variants are XBB 1.5 at 49.1%, BQ 1.1 is at 26.9%, and BQ.1 is at 13.3%. Taking a look at the national hospitalizations, and let's refresh this. I actually had it set to New York State because New York State's dashboard today is not working. It worked earlier, and it stopped working just before I was going to do this video. Huh, shouldn't be a surprise, given no one seems to care about the data anymore. 33,893 people are currently hospitalized for coronavirus. 75.63% of all beds are being used in the country. So that's actually an improvement. Remember, it was 79% on the Saturday update. And hospitalizations, 5.11% of them are for coronavirus. Let's go down to New York State, shall we? Currently in New York State, 79.58% of all beds are being used. So that's relatively high. 3,272 of them are being used for coronavirus. So while that number is dropping, I am concerned at the fact that almost 80% of all beds are being used. And that's telling me not all hospitalizations that are coming in for COVID might be being marked down as COVID, or there's a lot of post-COVID complications, and that's causing the hospitals to be busy as well. Remember, blood clots, heart problems, strokes all happen post-COVID, and that does cause hospitalization. So 8.05% of their beds being used are currently for coronavirus. Taking a look at the Walgreens map, you will see here there are a few red states now, meaning positivity is rising in some areas. There's three of them in the northeast, Pennsylvania, Vermont, New Hampshire. Let's take a look at the Vermont positivity. Vermont's now up to 38.9% rapidly going up and it's not like they're doing high numbers of testing so i think this is a legitimate rise even though wastewater's dropping in the northeast i haven't looked at vermont specifically that's a pretty big increase for positivity i would have to think uh, cases are also rising because remember last week on monday was a holiday they had a three-day weekend what happens on three-day weekends in the winter in vermont you get a lot of skiers going up there you get a lot of tourism and that's a cause for cases also, let's take a look at Alaska. Alaska, 48 tests this week, 50 tests last week. That's a difference of two tests. That's not a very big difference. And yet they had 11.3% increase in uh, positivity. So, yeah, that 33.3%, that's legitimate. And they probably are seeing cases rising. And you could go into all these other ones and possibly find reasons for cases to actually be rising. We'll see what happens by the end of the week. If we see more states turning red with uh, the difference rising and the total number of testing getting smaller than yes. We will see legitimate case rises in areas. And the difference is only 
down 1%. So it is on almost on the turning point of getting ready to rise again for positivity across the country. Let's take a look at the deaths around the country. Yesterday, 213 deaths were added. So far, there have been 1,104,480 deaths total from the pandemic. We know that's an undercount. That puts us at over 11,000 for this year, and we're probably on pace for easily 200,000 reported deaths this year. That's saying reported. That's not including all the ones that don't get counted. So yes, it's going to be another deadly year with this pandemic. Those who are saying it's over, they're wrong, and this is still a serious problem. Briefly taking a look at flu. Flu numbers have dropped into most of the country, with exceptions to New Mexico, where it's still high, still high in California. And take a look at New York City. New York City, despite the rest of New York State being uh, low to near moderate now, New York City is still high. District of Columbia is still high. So there are still some areas that are dealing with issues with flu. Alrighty, thanks for watching this video, everyone. We'll have another update again tomorrow. And remember to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.